Hi, it's Joe here from Joe's Country Junction, and I am here for the last installment of making our Piccadilly Circus Quilt. I've done some things in advance. Um, well, first off, I want to say if you came to this video and you haven't seen the previous two videos, I suggest that you go back and look at those, and um, then you'll be able to see um, how we're doing things. I'm going to turn quick and grab something here. So in the first video, you will see how to make these pieces right here, the star points. And well, no, I take that back. In the first video, you're going to see how to make these center crumb blocks. And in the next video, you're going to see how to make these star point blocks. And now in this video, I'm going to show you how to put the quilt together. When we were making the star points, we got a lot of extra bonus pieces and those bonus pieces are going to become the sashing strips. So what I've done is in advance, I um, took all of those strips and I cut them down and made sure that they're all two inches square. And then I have been starting to add them together into strips to make sashing pieces. You'll have enough to do quite a bit of it but you're not gonna be able to have enough to do all of the sashing. So you're gonna to have to go back and make some uh, two inch triangles. And to do that, I used two inch strips and then I used my easy angle ruler and I put the two pieces right sides together. The two strips were right sides together. And then I used my easy angle ruler and I flipped it back and forth and I cut the pieces and then I sewed a little stack of triangles here so that I have enough to finish the sashing. I am I have three strips together and so the strips look like this. But I'm gonna tell you when you make the sashing strips, um, I grabbed the wrong, oh yeah, no, I grabbed the right one. The sashing strips, when you sew the triangles together, they're going to be a little bit too long. You can see over here on this side that this much is hanging off the edge. And so I'm just going to take a scissors and clip this off. This quilt is kind of um, a great quilt for someone who is looking to start learning how to do improv quilting because there's a little bit of improv to it, but it's still pretty structured. So the improv is like, you know, making these, but we're still cutting it down to be four and a half inches. And then a little bit of improv is to make these and then sewing the bonus pieces together to make the sashing. That's a little bit of improv too. And just being casual about just clipping to um, square up the sashing. That's something that we don't typically do when we do uh, regular quilting as well. So what I'm doing here is I am working on sewing some sashing strips for this direction on the quilt. So I'm going um, right along here. I have three rows just like this all ready to go. And um, I'm going to be sewing some of these triangles together now. And what I want to tell you about this is I sew them together any which way. You can see here that the triangles aren't... Um, the blue isn't always to the top, the green isn't always to the bottom. They're really just a mismatch. Sometimes the angle goes this way, sometimes the angle goes this way. I'm not picky about it as all, at all. And if you see it in the quilt, I think it actually looks good that way. And it takes out some of the stress of sewing. So often people um, end up quite stressed when they're sewing because they think that everything has to be perfect. And in most projects, you know, it kind of it does need some perfection, but this project, it doesn't. And it's really, I love this kind of quilting. It, it makes me feel a little more artsy rather than um, regimented. And I, I kind of like that. And a lot of other people um, enjoy that as well. And so you can see here is the side where I just clipped off an end of that sashing strip. And it's just going to sew up and be just fine. You're never going to notice or see that. That's the nature of this uh, improv of this quilt. So I'm just sewing some pieces together, hoping to get something long enough. I need two strips that are long enough that are the width of this section. So I've got a couple pieces going here. I don't know if I made enough triangles or not. I might have to stop and make some more triangles. Um, I'm just 
Sewing them together, however they land is fine. I'm not picky at all. I've got another longer strip here. I'm gonna sew that to this as well. When I did this quilt, I uh, it's very uh, blues and greens are the are the colors that I focused on, and I'm really glad I did. I really like how it's looking. My greens go from a limey green to a um, army green or an olive green to a hunter green. I really love the limey and the blues. They go from light blue to navy blue to. Um, any kind of sort of blue you can imagine. And um, then they also go into the teals. But I think to get a nice variety is very good um, on this quilt to um, have a variety of all different blues and greens. I've been working on this just a few hours and I've been filming a video when I've been doing it and it's gotten so that I'm, yeah, I got far, far along very quickly. And I love that. This is one of my favorite uh, pieces in the quilt. It's a blue polka dot right here with a green, well, it's a dark blue background with a green polka dot. I think that's a really fun one. And I try to, when I sew these together, I'm not very picky, but I do try to um, not put seven navies together in a row, but I might put two navies together. My dogs, can you hear them? They're, um, I'm in my sewing room right here, my hallway to the that leads to my other bedrooms because we're on the upper floor of my house. My, I have three bedrooms down the hall that way, and my dogs are in the hallway, and they're wrestling. As a reminder, these pieces were just pieces that we had cut off and used that were from making the star points of the block. These are the bonus pieces we cut from the two and a half inch. Uh, bonus triangles, I guess we will call them. And so a lot of times some people like <laughs> cut the extras off and throw them away. I did not do that because I wanted to make sure that I, yep, there's the dogs. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I could use those pieces for this sashing because what a great way to have something already sewn just while you already have it matched together and it gave good variety to my quilt. I think we need a little bit longer yet. We'll see, I think I'm gonna probably have to make a few more of these triangles, which is totally okay. They are quick to make, which is nice. I'm just gonna run some twosies through now. really enjoyed making this. I like um, improv quilting. I like when I can use up all of my little bits and pieces. Um, I'm just going to hold this up so we get an idea of how much more we need. Um, we're getting close. You can see maybe if I add two more onto the sashing and I've got two more right here. So I'm going to just sew those on. And then I'll probably be right back because I'm going to head to my ironing board and I'm going to give that an iron and um, I'll check back in with you now that you've seen how to um, just sew the small bonus triangles. We're only using the small ones at this point. We're not using the larger ones that are um, uh, white and colored. These are the ones that are both sides are colored and there's no white into any of these pieces. And I'm gonna sew this one more on and then I'll 
have to take a quick break and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back at the machine and I have attached um, two rows together. You can see how it's looking. It's just a baby quilt, so it's not really big, but it's, it's gonna be uh, bigger than normal baby quilt because I am very adamant that I actually usually make a toddler size quilt for a baby versus a baby quilt because um, quilts aren't really supposed to be in baby's cribs anymore like they did in the past because of SIDS, uh, sudden infant death syndrome. And I have lost two great, one great niece and one great nephew to SIDS. So I'm very careful about SID guides, guidelines. So I want to make a quilt that's a little bit bigger. Um, something that, you know, once they are two or three, they can use in their bed or something that a mom can use to lay on the floor and the baby can play on the floor. And so I make my my baby quilts a little bit bigger, always bigger than 40 inches. And this one's definitely gonna be bigger than 40 inches. So um, here we are so far and we have the pieces together. What we need to do now, we have a sashing strip here. We need to add the next row. And one thing I want to encourage you to do is right here is the sashing strip that's coming up. And I put two pins right here and I put two pins right here. And the reason I'm doing that is I need my sashing strips that are gonna be going this way to line up to those. So when I'm attaching this piece, I take the sashing strip piece that you can see right here, and I line that up with the two pins, and then I pin that in place right there so that I know that when I sew this piece on, the sashing strips will line up. So in this quilt, the sashing strips are making like a tic-tac-toe board, and I wanna make sure that the lines are equal both ways. So that's why you put the pins in so that you can line those up. I like I typically make quilts with cornerstones just for that reason so that I don't have to do this, but it's not a big deal to do on this little baby quilt at all. And I've got those lined up and then I can sew this strip. So I'm going to sew this strip. I'm going to iron it and then I'm going to add a, a inner border to the outside of it. And I'll be right back and I'll show you what, how I did that. Okay, since I took that little break, I did a couple things. I added the inner border around the quilt right here. And I started adding outer borders. Yeah, so these outer border pieces are pieces that we've already made. They were made when we were making the star points we put the three and a half inch square on there. We sewed on the diagonal and then we sewed again. These are the pieces that we had that were left over. And so those bonus triangles that we made then are going to be, oh, sorry, excuse my fingernails. I've been just outside gardening right before I filmed this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is the what the border is looking like. I sewed it together just all eclectically, one way or the other. Um, some of them have that little extra triangle piece that happens when we are sewing the bonus ones. Here's another one that has that extra triangle piece. But you can just see that they're all kind of mismatched and kind of silly looking. And um, it kind of adds to the, well, the name of the quilt is Piccadilly Circus. So it adds to the circus feel and the silliness of the quilt. And so this is what the border is looking like. And it's very improv, very, um, you know, however the pieces land is how they land. You could do it differently if you want to. I have the border added to this side too. And um, I purposely, okay, you can see how it's kind of just all silly and however pieces land is how they land. If you wanna go through and make yours so that all the triangles are to the bottom and all the whites to the top, you can certainly do that. You can see over here that my strip was bigger than my quilt top, so I am just gonna take my scissors and I am going to just cut that piece off because remember this is improv quilting and very randomness and that's just the way it works. This inner border was cut from two inch strips and added. 
and I will be adding the last two border piece or two uh, side borders. I have them already sewn together and I will do that quick and then I will be right back and show you a finished quilt. Okay, I'm back and I have my finished quilt up. And hopefully, I wonder I'm gonna try something quick. Yeah, I wonder if lighting is just a little better that way. Okay, um, I have trouble in this room with my lighting. So here's my quilt top. It's really much more vibrant than it shows. It The top ends up being 48 by 48. Anyway, well, let's go with this lighting. So this is my Piccadilly Circus quilt top. It was featured in Quilt Maker Magazine um, in a 2018 issue and in a current issue from 2023. Uh, you won't need the pattern to make this because I um, used alternate instructions when I designed it. And then the quilt magazine, they rewrote the instructions to make it be paper piecing. So I'm free to tell you how I made it. Uh, these are the star points. These are the crumb blocks. So the crumb blocks, I showed you how to do those in video one. The star point blocks, I showed you how to do those in video two. And in video three, I've kind of just talked you through putting it all together. And I'll tell you a few more of the details one more time. These blocks are all four and a half, cut to four and a half inches. These are all trimmed to four and a half inches. These are trimmed to four and a half inches. These are the bonus pieces that were made when we were adding these pieces on to the quilt. And they have a tic-tac-toe sashing border effect. Those blocks, all of these were cut to two inches. I had to end up making a few more of these triangles that were two inches. But if you don't want to make triangles, it's no big deal. Just add some squares in there. It'd be no, no problem at all. Your quilt will still be really cute. And then this inner border strip, that was cut at two inches. And these outer blocks... Some of these have the little goofy points on them. Some of them don't. They were made when we were making these star block points. And then we just saved those bonus triangles. And those were cut to three inches. And there's enough of them to sash the quilt if you follow the guidelines that I set out. So I am going to be taking this and loading it up on my long arm, which is just right here behind me. And I will be finishing this up. And um, I'm going to be so happy to have this extra quilt uh, sitting around for the next boy baby that's born in my life. Uh, and as I said, um, I'm, it's not a grandchild that I'm, aware of, that I'm aware of. I don't think any, any of my kids are expecting at this point right now, which is totally fine. But um, the neighbor gal across the road, she's expecting. And um, it, who knows, maybe they'll have a boy and maybe this will be the, the quilt that they get. But I do have a deck, couple other quilts here in case they would have a girl. So that's what I typically do. I usually have a boy quilt and a girl quilt lined up. And then if they have a boy or a girl, I gift whatever quilt that is. And then the next time someone else is pregnant, I make um, the opposite quilt or the quilt that I gave away. And so I always have a couple baby quilts waiting in the wings. Right now, I think I probably have about three baby quilts for girls, but no baby quilts for boys. So this is a fun one. Um, I'm so happy that you joined me as I was making this. Uh, maybe you didn't join me sewing, but maybe you just watched videos and um, came along with me on the journey. I appreciate that. Um, if you would give me a little like or give me a thumbs up, that's just awesome. I really like that. And if you um, want to subscribe, that'd be great too. Um, I had a lot of fun making this and I hope to do another sew along in the future. So check back on my blog and you can see the finished quilt. My blog is joescountryjunction.com. Thanks so much for joining me in my sewing room today and you have a happy sewing. Bye.